Beauty and the Beast by Jenny Dooley Chapter 1 The Castle A very long time ago, on a small farm, there lived a poor farmer with his three daughters. He never made much money, as his farm was very small. When he was a young man, he lost the most valuable thing in his life. His beautiful and kind wife died when their last baby daughter was born. Now his daughters were almost young women, but the farmer still felt the same pain in his heart for her. One day, he called his girls. Girls, listen to me. We have more fruit from our trees and more wheat from our fields than ever before. I can sell a lot of food this year and buy a new cart. Gertrude, his eldest daughter, was very happy about this. Good, because I cannot walk to the village anymore or carry wood for the fire. I need a cart. Ursula, his second daughter, was also happy about it. Can I come with you, father? I want to see the town for once. I can't take you with me. You must help your sisters with the work on the farm. But I will bring each of you a present. I want a new satin dress, an expensive one. I want some new clothes too. And I want some jewellery, a necklace and a ring. Well, girls, I will buy you what I can. Then he looked at his youngest daughter. What do you want from the town? Father, I only want you to come back home safely. The farmer saw in her kind face the face of his dear, sweet wife. But then his other daughters shouted, You only say that because you want to make us look selfish. Don't listen to her, father. She likes this poor life on the farm. She is stupid. This was not true. She was very clever. She was also very beautiful. And that was why her name was Beauty. The farmer looked at the older girls. Why were they so unkind? He looked at Beauty and smiled at her. Come on, my love. Let me bring you a present. Tell me, what do you want? All right, father. Will you bring me a rose? A rose? Why? Only a rose, my dear, when you could have a present? A rose looks so pretty, father. And when you touch it, it is like silk, so soft. And the smell... There is no perfume as lovely as a rose. Yes, my dear, you are right. I will bring you one. The next day, the farmer left early in the morning. It was a long journey through the forest. He stayed in a small inn, and the next day he went to the market. Oh dear, carts are very expensive. I can only buy a very small one. After that, he looked at clothes for his daughters, but they were very expensive too. I only have enough money for one dress and a pair of shoes. It is better than nothing. When the farmer left the town the next day, the weather was terrible. It was a cold November day. The sky was grey and heavy, and the wind was strong. As he left the town, it started to snow. It was pretty at first, but an hour later he began to worry. He took the horse into the forest, but there was no path, just deep snow. It isn't possible. I have lived here all my life, but now I'm lost. The weather got worse and worse. It was nearly dark, and the farmer was scared as he was now completely lost. Just then, the horse began to go faster. It found a path, and it followed it. Faster and faster the horse went, into the deep snow. Then, suddenly, there were no more trees, just a big open space. I must be dreaming. For a moment, I thought I saw a castle. But he wasn't dreaming. There, in front of him, stood a beautiful big castle. I will ask for food and a bed for the night. I am so tired and hungry. And tomorrow someone will show me the way home. He went through the enormous gates, into the garden, and left his horse in the stable. There were no other horses in there, 
but there was some food. Then he walked up to the castle door. It was open. That's strange. I wonder who lives here. Chapter 2 The Rose Hello! Is anybody there? There was no reply. That's very strange. A wonderful castle like this, but nobody in it. Perhaps there is someone upstairs. The farmer went up the grand staircase and into the rooms upstairs. He opened a door into a small room. It was warm inside. There was a big fire with a comfortable chair in front of it. He saw a table with a meal on it and a bed ready to sleep in. The farmer sat down and ate the meal. Then he went over to the bed. He was very tired and he went to sleep immediately. The next morning, he woke up with the sun shining on his face. At first, he didn't remember where he was. Then he saw the table with breakfast on it. Hot, fresh coffee, sweet bread rolls, jam, fruit and fresh cream. He ate the breakfast and then looked around the room. In the corner, there was a jug of hot water, soap and a towel. Well, I need a wash, it's true. But who did all this? He washed and then left the room. He walked along the long hallways and down the stairs. Again he called out. Hello! Is anybody there? Again there was no answer. Well, somebody knows I'm here. But who? And how can I say thank you for the kindness, the food and bed? Oh well, never mind. Maybe one day a poor traveller will come to my door. I will certainly do the same thing for him. Now I must go. My daughters are waiting for me. He went to get his horse from the stables, which were across the garden. The garden was beautiful. Lovely green grass and flowers of every colour. He suddenly remembered his promise to Beauty to bring her a rose. At that moment, he saw something in the middle of a flower bed. Just look at that rose. I have never seen anything so beautiful in all my life. The rose was pink, but inside it there was a golden light. It was so bright that he thought, It cannot be real. It must be magic. It is a perfect present for beauty. He put his hand forward to pick the rose. Leave it alone! A terrible voice shouted at him. Who do you think you are? I give you everything a poor traveler needs, and you steal my rose? What a noise! The ground shook under the farmer's feet. He turned his head, and he saw it. It was on two legs like a human, but it was taller than any human. It was covered with fur, long, dark fur. It had gigantic paws and horrible long ears. But the worst thing was the face, the horrible, ugly face. It had eyes like a wolf and two big horns. The face was angry and fierce, and the voice, oh, the voice, the words of a human, but the sound of a wild lion. The farmer was very scared. I am very sorry. I, I, I didn't want to upset you. And you are right. You have done everything to make me welcome in your home. So in return, you steal. I, I am sorry. But the rose wasn't for me. I did it for someone very special. Someone with a heart of gold. And who is that? It's, it's, it's my youngest daughter, Beauty. Now the beast was quieter and calmer. But still, when he spoke, the farmer was afraid. Why do you call her beauty? Because she is the most beautiful girl in the whole world. And her heart is as lovely as her face. Please, I, I beg you, forgive me and, and let me go to her. 
I will let you go to her. But you must bring her back to me. I am looking for someone with a very good heart. Bring me your daughter and you will live. Oh no! I cannot ask my beauty to give her life to save mine. Please, no. I am I'm so sorry about the road. Did you hear me? Go! Bring beauty to me! Now the farmer was terrified. Yes, I... Quiet! You have one week. You must be back here in one week with your daughter, Beauty. She must come here because she wants to come. And don't bring another daughter. I want Beauty. If you don't come back with her, I will find you and kill you. Do you hear me? Yes, yes, sir. I hear you. Now take the rose to Beauty and go. Chapter 3 Beauty Goes to the Beast The farmer went back to the flower bed. He picked the rose, then took his horse and cart and left the castle. He rode through the forest with a heavy heart. Now I'm going to lose Beauty. My dear Beauty, how can I tell my daughters about this? I am no good as a father. He thought about all this until he reached his house. His two older daughters saw him through the trees and they ran out to meet him. Father, is this the new cart? It's not very big. Father, where are our presents? Come on, I want to see my jewellery. Come inside. Beauty was in the kitchen. And when she saw her father, she ran to him and kissed him. Father, you are safe. But what took you such a long time? I was worried. Come and have some hot soup. You look so tired. Oh, get out of the way, Beauty. We want to see our presents. Where are they, Father? I can only see two bags. Come and sit down and listen to me, all of you. And he told them everything. About the cart and how expensive it was, and that he didn't have enough money for all the presents. And then about the journey in the snow, and the castle in the middle of the forest. A castle, Father? How lovely! Were they friendly to you? Did you eat lovely food? Then the farmer went over to his coat and he took the rose out of his pocket. Here you are, my dear beauty. This was the most expensive present of all. In fact, I don't know how to pay for it. Beauty took the rose. Father, it's perfect! How did you find such a wonderful flower? And why was it so expensive? What do you mean? The farmer told the daughters about the rose and the horrible beast in the garden. Was he very angry, father? Did he hurt you? Oh, my girls, I don't know how to tell you. Yes, the beast was very angry. I am only here now because I made a promise. A promise? To a beast? What was the promise? Tell us, father. The beast said I must give him one of my daughters in one week, or he will come here and kill me. Beauty must go. Ursula was angry. It's all your fault, Beauty. You asked for the rose. Why didn't you ask for a proper, sensible present, eh? But Beauty was calm. Father, I cannot let the beast harm you. I must go. No, I can't let you go. Father, you are in danger. I love you more than anything or anyone in the whole world. You are so good to me. Now it is my turn to be good to you. I want to go. Beauty, you don't know what you're saying. The beast is ugly and very frightening. It doesn't matter. I want to do this for you. Now eat your soup and go to bed. Good night. Beauty kissed her father and went to bed. Five days later, Beauty and her father left. When they reached the castle, Beauty saw how wonderful it was. Father, it is fantastic! Beauty was very nervous, but she didn't want her father to know. She knew that he was very unhappy. Hello? Is anybody at home? The beast stood at the top of the stairs. 
Hello, Beauty. What a terrible voice. Beauty's heart almost stopped. She could only see his shadow, but she answered him. Hello, Beast. Beauty, don't be afraid. Tell me, have you come here because you want to be here? Yes, Beast, I have. Beauty looked at her father. There were tears in his eyes and on his face. He covered his face with his hands. Farmer, go to the next room and fill the two big boxes with jewels, clothes, and anything you like in the room. Take them and go. When the beast left the room, Beauty said, Oh, Father, please don't cry. She brought him to the next room and filled two boxes with clothes and jewels while he watched helplessly. He left the same night, unable to forgive himself, but also very frightened of the beast. Chapter 4 The Dream Beauty stood at the window and watched her father as he left the castle. She waved as he rode out of the garden and into the forest. She watched him as he got further and further away. When he was only a tiny spot of colour in between the trees, she left the window and looked around the room. She was completely alone and very scared. She lay down on the bed, hid her head in the pillows, and cried herself to sleep. In her sleep, Beauty had a dream. She dreamed that she was in the hall of the castle, and that she saw a handsome young man. She walked up to him. His eyes were deep blue with a beauty that was not of this world. She saw that he was not an ordinary man, but a prince. There was something magical about him. When he spoke, his voice went straight to her heart. She looked at him, and she was filled with love for him. He spoke to her. Beauty, don't be sad. Things are not the way they seem. Please find me and save me from my misery. I am very unhappy. But, Prince, how can I help you? Don't trust your eyes. Just listen to your heart. Then a clock striking softly twelve times woke her up. Beauty remembered where she was. She remembered the wonderful prince of her dream and she was calm and happy. She remembered that in the dream the prince was in the hall so she decided to go there. She walked around the hall and it was all the same as in the dream. But of course there was no prince. Beauty had a wonderful time exploring the castle, but she could not stop thinking about the prince. But what does it all mean? After all, it was only a dream, but it seemed so real. Is the beast so cruel that he can keep the prince in prison? He must be very evil. While looking for the prince, she found a room full of toys and stuffed animals which spoke to her and danced with her. In the next room, musical instruments played themselves. The third room she entered was bright, full of candles, lamps and chandeliers. A beautiful fur cape flew in front of her. She took it and put it round her shoulders. When she finally got back to her room, there were all kinds of books for her to read and a delicious meal on the table. Beauty ate the meal and started to read one of the books. She was so interested in the story that she didn't hear anyone at the door. She looked up and the beast was in front of her. She was very frightened, although he spoke softly to her. Hello, Beauty. Did you find things to make you happy today? Yes, thank you, Beast. Good. I want you to be happy here. Oh, yes, Beast. 
everything is lovely here. Beauty, I want to ask you something. But you must give me an honest answer. The answer that comes from your heart. Yes, Beast. What is it? Beauty, I love you. Do you love me? What should she say? She was afraid of him, and she didn't know how to say no. And so she said, No, Beast. You are kind, but I don't love you. And I don't want to marry you. At this, the Beast let out a roar of anger and pain. Why don't you love me? Am I so ugly? He shouted at the terrified beauty and left the room. Chapter 5 The Strange Room The beast frightened Beauty, but he made her sad too. He seemed so unhappy. She went back to her storybook and tried to forget about him. She didn't know what else to do. That night, Beauty had another dream about the prince. This time he was unhappy. Beauty, my beauty, why are you unkind to me? I love you so much, why do you hurt me? His eyes were full of tears, and Beauty felt a pain in her heart. It was such a sad dream that Beauty woke up. She sat up in bed. What have I done to the prince? Why is he so sad? I hate to see him like this. What can I do? She remembered the other dreams, and she still didn't understand. They are only dreams after all. The reality is this castle and the beast. Beauty got up and went to look around the castle again. I wonder what I shall find today. She found some stairs and went up them. When she reached the top, she found a door. Beauty opened the door and went inside. What a strange room. Everything is old here. Old toys, old furniture, old pictures. I wonder where they came from. She picked up one of the pictures. I can't believe it. It's the prince. A picture of the prince. So he is real. It certainly was a picture of the prince. He was exactly the same as the one in her dream. Even the clothes were the same. But where was he? And why was he in her dreams? She remembered how lovely he was, and she wanted to see him again. And she remembered his message in the dream. Things are not the way they seem. And she remembered the other part of the message. Please don't leave me. Save me. She went to many more rooms, but they weren't interesting anymore. She wanted to look for the prince. Eventually it got dark and Beauty went back to her room. The fire was bright, and the meal was on the table for her as usual. She ate the meal and sat down to read her book. Again the door opened, and the beast came in. Hello, Beauty. Hello, Beast. Did you enjoy your day? Yes. The castle is full of lovely things. I was very happy. She decided not to tell him about the prince. Tell me, Beauty, do you really like being here? Oh, yes, Beast. And do you like me? Oh, yes. You are very kind to me. She decided to be more friendly to him, so she asked him a question. Beast, what do you do all day? I never see you in the castle. Have you got any friends? The beast walked to the window and sat down. Then he turned round and said sadly, Beauty, do you love me? Will you marry me? She knew she didn't love him. Say what you feel, Beauty. I only want your honest feelings. 